Section 7.6, Linear Programming. Linear Programming is basically going to be a story problem section, so just be prepared for that. Um, in a linear programming problem, there's going to be several things you need to look for. Um, the first thing you're going to need to look for are constraints. Um, constraints are going to be situations that like a manufacturer or a boss or someone has set on you um, to live within the boundaries of. Each constraint is going to be written as an inequality. So it's going to use a less than, greater than, less than or equal to, or greater than or equal to. You'll have to decide um, which symbol based on the context of the problem. Um, after you've read the constraints, you're going to need to list the constraints, and this is going to form a system of linear inequalities, which is what we did in the last section. Once you have the system of linear inequalities, you're going to graph all of them on the same grid, and it will often form a geometric shape. This geometric shape is going to be called your feasible region. So here's an example of what it's going to look like. So um, the blue line was one constraint. The red line was another constraint. And if you notice in this example, they've stayed in the first quadrant. And the purple represents your feasible region. Now, if you notice, there's sharp little corners on this feasible region. These corners are called your vertices. And those are going to be important to you when you go to solve the problem. Um, after you've found your constraints and graphed your constraints, the next thing you want to do is you want to write your objective function. So there's always an objective in the problem. Typically, it's to maximize or minimize something. So in the example I'm going to show you, our goal is to maximize profit, and so we'll write that objective function. Your goal is to find the quantity of X and Y that you need to manufacture or sell or whatever the content is talking about in order to maximize or minimize the objective. Um, in order to test um, which answer is the correct answer, you need to take all the vertices from your feasible region and one at a time plug them into your objective function. The highest value gives you the maximum and the lowest value gives you the minimum. Okay, so just to summarize what uh, the procedure is, first thing you want to do is determine all of your constraints. Second thing you want to do is determine your objective function. Third, you want to graph your feasible region, and you want to find the vertices of your feasible region. Last, you want to take the vertices of each feasible re uh, the vertices of each point, and you want to substitute those into your objective function, and you want to decide which one creates the maximum or minimum value of the objective function. These problems are pretty lengthy, so I'm just going to show you one example, but please feel free to ask questions um, in class if you need to. Also, there's a discussion question this week that is a linear programming problem, so if you want to get some more practice, you may want to give that problem a try as well. The Admiral Appliance Company makes washers and dryers. The company must manufacture at least one washer per day to ship to one of its customers. No more than six washers can be manufactured due to production restrictions. The number of dryers manufactured cannot exceed seven per day. Also, the number of washers manufactured cannot exceed the number of dryers manufactured per day. If the profit on each washer is $20 and the profit on each dryer is $30, how many of each appliance should the company make per day to maximize profit? What is the maximum profit? Okay, so there's a couple of things you don't know. First of all, you don't know how many washers or how many dryers you're going to make. So those are going to be your variables. So how about we let X be the number of washers that we make a day. And we let Y be the number of dryers. Okay. And then with that, we should be able to go through and pick out our constraints and write our objective. Um, usually the objective is the easiest one to write. Our objective in this problem is to max the profit. So that's our objective. Okay, so we need to write a profit equation. Now, the profit depends on the washers and the dryers. We profit $20 per washer and $30 per dryer. So our profit equation is going to be 20 times the number of X's we make 
and 30 times the number of y's we make. Okay, now you're not going to deal with that guy, that profit equation, until later. So save that for later. In order to do anything with the profit equation, you have to find the vertices of the feasible region. Well, to get the vertices of the feasible region, you have to know all the constraints, and they have to be written as inequalities. So let's see if we can pick those out. We're going to go back to the beginning. Okay, so the first sentence, the Admiral Company makes washers and dryers. Great, that's not helpful. The second sentence says, the company must manufacture at least one washer per day. Okay, so your washers are X. So X must be at least one. That means X can be greater than one. X can also be equal to one. And that would um, fulfill the commitment that you must make at least one washer per day. Okay. Um, next. It says, no more than six washers can be manufactured due to production. So no more than six washers can be manufactured. So that's another constraint. So your washers are X, and the maximum you can make is six. So that means you can make less than six or equal to six, but no more than six. Okay? Let's go to the next sentence. The number of dryers manufactured cannot exceed seven per day. Okay, so dryers is Y, and we cannot make more than 7 per day. So our Ys needs to stay less than or equal to 7. Now, they didn't give you a minimum number of dryers that you can make, but you can use some logic here. Um, it would be impossible to make negative number of dryers. So you can use some thought and say, well, I at least have to make a minimum of zero dryers it's impossible to make a negative one dryer. Okay. Then there's one more constraint. It says also the number of washers cannot exceed the number of dryers. So the number of washers is X and the number of dryers is Y and X cannot exceed Y so that means X has to be smaller than Y or that X can be equal to Y. Okay, these are all your constraints that I have here in blue. So now what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to graph your constraints on a grid and you're going to have to see um, what shape gets trapped by this image. Okay, um, Let me pull up a grid here. Okay. We can stick to just the first quadrant um, because you can't have negative washers and dryers, okay? All right, so first things first, we want x to be greater than or equal to 1. Okay, so x equals 1 is a vertical line, and you want x to be greater than or equal to 1, so you want items that are to the right of this line, okay? Next, you want x to be less than or equal to 6. So x equals 6 is also a vertical line. And you want the x's to be smaller than 6, so you want it to be to the left of this vertical line. Okay. Next, you want y to be less than or equal to 7. Okay, well y equals 7 is a horizontal line. And you want to be less than that horizontal line. Um, also, you want y to be greater than 0. y equals 0 is a horizontal line, and you want to be bigger than that horizontal line. And last, you want the line y equals x, or y less than or equal to um, x less than or equal to y. Well, that's your 45 degree line. Okay, and you want the y's to be bigger than that. So you're going to end up shading above it. So if you are real careful, you're going to notice that you have a little triangle here that overlaps all five of those inequalities. And that's what you're trying to find. This little triangle would be my feasible region. Okay. Now there's a theorem out there that says the maximums and minimums occur at the corners of your feasible region. So we need to find these corners. 
Okay, so our first corner is located at the point 1, 1. Our second corner is located at the point 1, 7. And our third corner is located at the point 6, 7. Now what we're going to do is one at a time, we're going to take those points and substitute them in for x and y. So let's substitute in 1, 1 first. So if we manufacture one washer and one dryer, we are going to profit 50 bucks. Next, let's substitute in 1, 7. Okay, so if we manufacture, um, oh, you know what, guys? There was another point right there. I missed one. 6, 6 as well. If I manufacture um, one washer and seven dryers, that's going to be a $230 profit. Okay, let's try six, seven. If I manufacture six washers and seven dryers, that is going to be a $330 profit. And then let's try six, six. If I manufacture six washers and six dryers, that is going to be a $300 profit. So our goal is to find the maximum profit, so we want to find the largest amount. That would be the $330 profit. So um, based on the constraints that they have given us, I need to manufacture six washers and seven dryers. Okay, each problem is going to be done the same way, but it's going to have different constraints. Um, so read carefully and let me know if you have any questions.